out. Thank you so much, uh, Council, Mrs. Mirinda uh, Jacqueline, for taking uh, the reading so clearly and calmly. God bless you. Dear friends, may we not be like that last servant. May we not be like that last servant. May God help us this afternoon learn from his son and daughter to identify and use our gifts. Brothers and sisters, before I welcome our next guest, uh, we know throughout this week we have been talking about the theme that is guiding us this week is identifying and using our gifts in the family of God or in God's family. Since Monday, the Lord has been speaking to us. Great men and women have been addressing us, engaging with us, and sharing their life journeys with us. And today, we are privileged again to engage with this topic, developing and using our talents and gifts within a family. Please, before we dive deep in our discussion, go ahead and share the link. Go ahead and tell a friend. Go ahead and, and, and invite your best friends, your brothers, your sisters, your mothers, everyone. Invite them. Let them come so that we can be able to learn together. Brothers and sisters, I know we are all expectant and excited. We are indeed privileged to have our mama, our elder, Canon Ruth. Senor Ni, who has just joined us, you are welcome. Please say hello to us, Canon Ruth. Uh, yes, say hello to us. Just introduce yourself and then we'll dive in. Yes, good morning or good afternoon, good lunchtime. Uh, we praise the Lord for this time again that he has afforded us. We thank God for uh, being available and for all that he has done uh, through online church. We thank you so much. Praise the name of the Lord. Great. Um, I will ask our IT team to send some details to um, Dr. Ruth on how to brighten that video. Um, Liam or Tinkunde, so that she can get some more light within her room. Just send those details to her. Praise the name of the Lord. But don't worry, Dr. Ruth, we can clearly see you. It is okay, we can see you, but we just wanted just to make it a little bit bright. Praise the name of the Lord. But we need your, your video on, Mama. <laughs> yes, as I have been sharing with you, brothers and sisters today, our topic is interesting and our guests are eager and ready to speak to us, indeed developing and using our talents. Our um, elders who are with us this day are gifted man, a man and a woman of God, very gifted by the Lord. Yes, God has blessed them in this ministry of family and they're here to speak to us. So please allow me welcome a Dr. Reverend Canon, Dr. John Senyonyi to give us an introduction on this theme that we have. We are going to do it differently this lunch hour. They are going to first each take five minutes just to throw more light on the theme around the topic. And then later we shall engage with, uh, with them using different questions. So please, Papa, you are welcome. Well, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Lydia. Um, if I can disorganize you a little bit, we are there agreed that for this time, uh, she would start, Canon Dr. Ruth would start, and then I will be coming in a little bit later. But it's the same thing. So we'll be kind of back and forth, but let's let her take over right away and start saying what we agreed to do. You are welcome, Canon. Um, thank you. Unfortunately, today we were not able to sit together. So I'm in my uh, workplace and he's at home. So, and then, uh, but uh, our theme has been this week, identifying and using our gifts in God's family. And today we are looking more at developing and using our talents and gifts within the family. And as you have heard the reading from Matthew 25, 14 um, and 30, uh, talking about the parable of the talents and what happened to those people who actually hid their talents and did not actually do anything about it. So when we think of talents and gifts within our family, it's kind of like there's need to discover 
there is need to nurture. So when you discover something, you always nurture it. It also gives us another analogy of, you know, going out to cultivate. Uh, we had a, we we have some banana plantation in our in our house in our, well not our house our compound, not very large, but we put a lot of work in it. I think John did put a lot of work in it. You had to cultivate. You had to put in stuff. You had to to go and check it out. And then now we are harvesting. We are eating a lot of matoke out of those of those ones. So same thing with talents and gifts. They just don't show up. You have to find them. You have to nurture them. You have to put work into them. So now we want to, the first thing we want to look at is the process of discovery. How do we discover these gifts and these talents in us? So first of all, it's important to recognize that each family member is unique. It's a, it's a unique individual who has been endowed with distinct talents and gifts, whether it is the father, the mother, the children, even the people who come to work for us, they have amazing gifts. And if you don't recognize that, then you will never discover because there are many people who try to put us in one big net and think that we shall all do the same thing. But within the family, we have differences. And it's important to try and discover those things when the child has just been born. So avoid comparing children or straight jacketing them into one gift or talent. So for me, my children are good at this, all of them. No, each one is very different. Uh, right now, I think our focus is more on our grandchildren than even our own children. And you know, the little baby that, that is now there, uh, Chiravo, is seven months today. And you know, you see his gifts already. He's, he's so loving. You know, you hold him and he wants to put his head on you and he wants to give you a hug. So he's, he's, he's already showing that he's a very loving individual. So you start very early. So ask some of the questions that we ask for discovery. What do you do or you as a person or you as a child or you as a husband or you in your wife, what do you enjoy doing? What comes naturally to you? Some of us, we speak and it's natural. Some of us, we, you know, we go out and visit the old people. It is natural. Some of us sing and it's natural. Some of us, you know, so there are things we do. So what do you see in your child? This means you need to take time. What is the child good at? Then you think of their dreams. Remember, we are in the process of discovery. What are the dreams that they have? Mm. And, uh, you know, when we talk about these things, we are asking questions so that we can discover exactly uh, what each member of the family is best at, their strengths and their weaknesses and so forth. Now, these have been reduced to what we what is called eight great smarts. In other words, what you are smart at. Um, so it is really talking about someone's perceptiveness or someone's acuity, uh, and you want to find out exactly what it is. And the eight are these. I will go through them uh, a little fast because of our time. But the first one is, for example, those that are word smart word smart they are good at expressing things in words um, they talk even when no one is listening or you may talk about the logic smart those are people who talks who think scientifically um, mathematicians scientists they tend to be logic smart you know this leads to that cause and effect um, that when i do this this is what happens but there is also picture smart, uh, people who think, who see things in terms of pictures. Uh, they are quite artistic and they understand things in terms of pictures. Uh, then fourthly, you will have those that are music smart, uh, people who express themselves in music very well. They understand things when they are in music. Or you may, use, you may even have those that are body smart. 
uh, those who speak with their bodies. You can see even as I speak, I keep on gesturing. But there are people who speak with, with their hands in one place. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm very much a body smart person because I tend to use my hands and move around and so on. So the body uh, is used. Then there is nature smart. Those who see nature and are able to notice the patterns in nature. You know, they look at the birds and they are able to make comparison between them and things like that. Then there are those that are people smart. Uh, those who are a lot more relational. Uh, those are the ones who are uh, people smart and they love spending time with the people and so forth. But then there are also some who are self-smart. Uh, in the sense that they, are, they reflect a lot more on themselves, they love privacy, and they have aloneness. Now, we need to understand that this kind of acuity or perceptiveness uh, is not just a matter of one or the other. Uh, I can express myself with the words, be word smart, but at the same time, be body smart. Or I can even be self-smart, that I spend a lot of time uh, reflecting on myself. So these are things that we need to be aware of to discover what a person is best at. Mm -hmm. Ruth? Um, so, after we have discovered, you know, it's important to seek expression in these things. For example, you've discovered that a person maybe is singing. I will just give, I'll just list them. Singing, maybe the person is very good at playing an instrument. I remember my brother, my brother has a, a son who when he was about two, he liked drumming and he was so good. He, he would just get some sticks and just keep drumming. And now he's a wonderful drummer. He, drum, he plays drums in, in, in um, so many places, in church as well as in, the, in, in, cool. in other places. So instrument, piano and things like that. Maybe the person is, loves to tell stories. Maybe they are encouraging or cooking, you know? Two of my children are very good cooks. I can't count myself as a very good cook, but they are very, very wonderful. So you see, you see that discovery and say, what do I need to put in there? Maybe it's painting, maybe it's leadership, preaching, teaching, maybe it's mathematics or being creative, or maybe they color very well, or maybe they use the camera or photo, very, very photo taking very well. So this discovery requires that you take time with your child. So it's important to pray for that discovery every day. Lord, may I discover what it is that my child has or what it is my wife, because we, we're not only talking about children, but wife or husband, that we may discover what this is and nurture it. Maybe we need to talk to them a little more, be conversational and say, what is it that you'd like to try while you're in P7 or while you're in the holidays? Can we go cooking? Allow for using what they desire or what you have seen in them and be the cheerleader to your child. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, let's move a little bit now to developing <laughs> those talents. We've now kind of discovered them, so how do we go about developing them? They, they are verses that are uh, very can instructive. Can pause there? Okay. okay. Is it okay? Can we pause there so we can engage with you? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, and sure. We shall have a session for uh, developing amazing amazing i am sure all of us are already <laughs> enjoying ourselves you know discovering um the talents it's such a, a privilege that god has given to us that indeed this day we are learning that we are all smart in different ways some of us are smart in word logic picture art different ways it's amazing for us to discover that but allow me to take you a little bit back in your early days in your just met after your wedding day and now starting to stay together. I don't know, of course, you had some expectations. I don't know when you wanted to give back to babies and what you had in mind or how you wanted your children to turn out. Dr. Ruth, I'll come to you as a mother. You know, when we get married, people have high expectations and demands. I don't know whether you conceived straight away. And uh, I do not know whether you had a preference of gender. And uh, just share with us what was your experience 
How were you able to prepare yourself for the babies if they came early or they delayed? Take us through. How were you able to prepare yourself for any gender? Did you want a particular gender as you're starting? Just help us because many mothers here are struggling when they you know, get into relations, marriage relationships. Yes, please. Yes, I did have my expectations and some of them, we talked about them before we got married, how many children we wanted. I don't think we really ever talked about the gender that we wanted boys or girls, but we said we wanted four children. At a certain point when we had got to, we we're like, are we really sure we want four children? <laughs> but uh, so when uh, my, my first pregnancy was a bit of a disappointment um, because I had some trouble. But then when, the, when Sarah, the, our firstborn uh, came by, I was very excited. Definitely, I did want to have a girl. I am the only girl in my family. So I grew up with a lot of boys. So I really, really wanted to have a girl and you know, we were praying so much about that. But then maybe to, to jump a little further, I then had three boys after that. So the fourth born, the last born, we thought would be a girl. And I, I think John was more into, she needs to be, and she has to be a girl, you know, because we already have one girl and two boys. We need another girl. So there were a lot of prayers and a lot of fasting and a lot of determination. But when I went into the scan, they asked us, do you want to know? And I said, no, but the way they were, you know, they were doing their scan, I could tell that this was going to be a boy. So I came back and started talking to everyone, you know, preparing them that actually this little boy is a boy, not a girl. So it can be quite something when you're expecting, there are many expectations that we had and uh, a few disappointments, but we thank God. In all, he always wow. does. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's interesting for us to get into your life in, you know, your early days of marriage. You know, now 36 years down the road. There are some 37. ladies on call here. Yeah, 37. 37. Yeah. <laughs> well, we amen and amen and amen. You know, there are some ladies on call here who are experiencing so much pressure on a gender, sex, boy, girl. And now we can a little bit relate with uh, Dr. Ruth, who also prayed and fasted for a baby girl and then turned out to be a baby boy. Briefly, Dr. Ruth, would you want to say something about disappointment there? Would you want okay. to say something in English? Um, I think there are times, I think we need to be prepared for disappointment. I was talking to one of my clients and she said, in, in her life, she had never failed. She had never gone through disappointment. And that happens to many of us. You know, you, you go through P7, you go through S4, you go through S6, you go through graduation and you're like, everything is going well. You get to work, you are soaring up into promotions then something all of a sudden happens. Maybe you get married. <laughs> and then after you get married, you get very disappointed because the romance and the things you are thinking about are not coming too. So, um, there are many disappointments. So we need to be ready for disappointments. I think, I, 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 I don't know whether I, I can say, I've been disappointed in some things, especially in terms of work, what I expected, I didn't, it didn't happen. What I wanted didn't happen. Maybe the money I was hoping to get did not happen. But my bottom line has always been, always do things to excellence, always do things no matter what is going on, always do things excellently. And that has helped me. I wow. mean, I, 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 I sit to, to do a sermon. I sit on that sermon like I'm dying tomorrow, you know? It's because of that, <laughs> everything. Wow. I, I may no be disappointed, in the end, but I've done my best. Mm. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ruth. You know, friends, we are noting here that disappointments are part of life. Personally, I don't want to be disappointed, and I feel so bad when I'm disappointed, but I'm being encouraged as well. Disappointment is part of life, so we need to prepare ourselves for disappointments, and most so as well, we need to prepare ourselves so for whatever answer God has for us. Dr. John Senyonyi, to you, Sam. You know, the early days of babies when Dr. Ruth is then she wasn't a doctor, 
breastfeeding the babies, they are growing. You know, we have a tendency as parents to want our babies to be a little bit like us, to have more of our traits, you know, to see yourself more in the baby. How, share with us, you know, there may be a parent here who is struggling and they are, when they see the traits of a father or mother coming through, they try to suppress them so that their traits come through. Did you have some challenges like that? Did you have those desires? How can you help us? <laughs> Well, there's a sense, uh, on the one hand, some things that you really want to be reflected in your child. And I have to admit that one of the things that I wanted so much had to do more with my faith, being reflected in my children. And so that was very clear. But uh, going beyond that, I really did not care very much as long as they knew the Lord as long as they reflected the faith that I had, you know, you don't want your children to go off and become Muslims or <laughs> things like that. Uh, but beyond that, then I also knew uh, that each of these children is God's gift and uh, it's not me who determines what else they are going to be. Uh, I do remember maybe a little later in life when the children were in secondary school, you know, in my heart, I would feel a certain sense of joy that they were taking mathematics and seriously doing it. Uh, so that was something that I was happy about. Uh, our daughter, for example, in senior four, she wasn't doing additional mathematics, but you know, she was good at mathematics. So she wanted to do additional mathematics. And for me, that was a great thing. Uh, to know that the boys eventually also also did uh, mathematics up to high school and even beyond. So there, it's a kind of mixed bag, I have to say, that yes, there are things that I wanted them to be like me and I rejoiced that they would have, but if they were not doing mathematics, I was not forcing anyone to do mathematics. It was really pretty much their choice. Mm. Amazing, friends on call, what a challenge. Yes, we desire to see some reflections, but the doctor has made it very clear that desiring to see your faith be reflected in your children's lives. I think that's amazing. Dr. Ruth, uh, we shall come to you. Um, you know, when the babe, the children are growing, the early years, you know, around three, four, five, 10, 12, you know, they are different. They are different and they are trying to throw tantrums here, trying to discover themselves here and there. How were you able, were you able to discover the differences, the uniquenesses at that stage in your children's lives so that you could cultivate them? Just help us. There may be young parents on call here. They, they are trying to force a child to be like one, the big brother or big sister, but yet they are different. How were you able to juggle that and to bring the uniqueness out? I think uh, the important thing is to know your children. And you can't know these children and, unless you spend time with them. So we want to thank God for the opportunity he gave us. I think when we went to the US, it was just us and the children. There was no one else. And we had to work with them every single day, wake them up, take them to school, bring them back, put them to bed. It was just the two of us. To me, that, that kind of pulled me into the responsibility of these children and also helped me to spend time with them so that I was able to see, we were able to see that these kids were all very different. I can give you examples. John Paul was very, very, very active, you know? I had just had Sarah, you could put her in a, in a chair in the, in, in the kitchen and she would stay there until you are done cooking. Now, John Paul, you would put him in that chair and within one second, he would be out of the door and you don't even know where he's gone. <laughs> you know, that was so different. It was just so amazing. And, you know, he was so quick and this one was so calm. They were so different. Same with the last two, they were so different. So John Paul would need some time to play before he did his homework. But Benjamin would come home and sit at the table and do his homework and finish it without, without needing to play. So I needed to give John Paul 
15, 10 minutes just to run outside when we had come from school and be able to play. Then he'll come back and sit and do his homework. They were so different. And once you don't recognize those differences, you straight jacket them and then life mm. becomes so difficult for them. So, yeah. And it's amazing. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. wow, wow, wow. This is amazing, friends. Spending time with the children. There is no shortcut. We cannot study our children without spending time with them. Spending time and then identify their uniquenesses and then minister or nurture them in their uniquenesses. Thank you so much. I found out recently that my, past, my son is more of an indoor when he sits on the computer and does his things. He will, yet the baby loves to be out. Mm -hmm. Go running here and there. And then sometimes they want to keep her inside. She cannot be inside. So I think it's important for us to study the differences and cultivate them intentionally. To you, Dr. John, Reverend Dr. John, uh, by the grace of God, I've been able to watch your children or I've been interacted and seen your children and all of them have turned out to be successful by the grace of God in their different parts of life. Just share with us as an academician, uh, a scholar, a minister, I would say that by the grace of God, God has allowed you, you know, be exposed and study. Did you in one way influence the direction or the career path of your children? How did you contribute to help us? Yes. Um, the, I can't say that I did not influence. The reason is very simple inevitably these children were watching and these days they make comments that indicate to us that they were actually watching and they were being influenced however when it came to um what they would be what they would choose what they would excel at in most cases what happened is it was conversational and so someone would say i want this or i want that and we never said to any that you can't be this. Uh, all we did, I mean, unless some, someone is seeking to do something sinful, <laughs> right? But in this case, each one of them had something that they wanted to aspire to. And we encouraged them to do that rather than stopping them. Um, I can say, for example, our last born, when he finished, he was actually, he had just finished his second term in senior six, going back for examinations. And then he said that he wanted to sit this U.S. examination that would give him opportunity to join a U.S. university. Um, I mean, we were hesitant, uh, but eventually we said, well, it's Matthew, let him, <laughs> let him go for it. And so we allowed him to sit for it, and he performed excellently uh, to the point that he was actually qualified to enter any Ivy League university in the United States. You know, they have those measures that they use. Uh, or take, for example, uh, Benjamin. Benjamin was also very interesting uh, because at some point he was at university after first year, and I'm the vice chancellor. And we're really very concerned and kind of protective of our children. Then all of a sudden he says, I want to go out, I want to stay out of the university hostels. Now as vice chancellor, I had the privilege of saying, let me protect my child because if any students are unhappy with me, I don't want them to take it out on my son. Now that was quite a decision. It was a very difficult one and we had to discuss it with Ruth and to say, what do we do with this young man? And we asked him, but why do you want to stay out? Of course, for us, fearful for what could happen to him. And he said, because I want to see the world. Very strange kind of reason. But we said, okay, you go and see the world. And we had to go inspect the place where he was going to stay and uh, make sure that he had, the, uh, he had an environment that was safe for him. We were very concerned about that. But let him go and see the world. Um, it was a very strange request that he made to us. And I could go on both to Sarah and to John Paul. In fact, John Paul wanted to be an architect from age 14. And we did not know if this would change because some of them, it changes over time. 
But, you know, he turned out to be an architect, and he's an architect, and we supported him all the way uh, to take that. In fact, when he finished, he, he wasn't given in Makere, he applied for private, they didn't give him, and uh, anyway, the long and short of it, eventually he managed to get placement in Dar es Salaam in Al the University, which, is, which originally was with Dar es Salaam University. So that's where he did his architecture. So we, we kind of encouraged our children in what they themselves wanted to do, what they wanted to be. Sarah, when she wanted to do additional mathematics, we supported her and we said, you do it. You know, so we just let them be as they were. Wow. Uh, amazing. That's great lessons, friends. Uh, please, let's continue to engage in the chat. Let's engage in the chat. Feel free to send in a number of them, number of questions, because this is an interesting conversation. Yes, um, Reverend Doctor has made it very clear, conversations, engaging, listening. Yes, they will come with out outrageous decisions, <laughs> but listening and supporting the decisions and following up and seeing and supervising, you know, in the limited way possible. Praise the name of the Lord. That's amazing. Uh, Dr. Ruth, um, I will come back to you. Um, you know, we have found out that, uh, you know, of course you've told us clearly how unique and, you know, smart children are uh, different and we need to understand the differences that our children have. I have noticed <laughs> by the grace of God, some similarities. You know, of course, you are the mother, your first child, and you <laughs> as a counselor in the family ministry. And now we are seeing more or less your daughter is turning in that direction. I'm sure as Dr. Earlier on, Reverend Dr. mentioned about the tough decisions. Imagine your daughter saying, I'm not going to be formally employed and I'm going to, you know, nurture my babies. And now she's doing a great ministry out of that. Share with us. How were you able to guide your daughter in this career path? Yes, some might think it's not a career path, but nurturing our children is our key role. And that's what you mainly do. Did you influence it? How were you able to guide your child in this direction? After educating and taking her to school and then she says, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> I might be tough or I don't know how you took it on. Please share with us. Um, I think um, a number of things that our children do is picked up from what we say and what we do and what we discuss. So we, we also have to be very intentional. When we're preparing for this, we talked about this and said, I don't think we sat down and ever sat down and said, okay, we are doing this so intentionally so that this person may become that because it's very hard to see what that person will become. But, but um, there are opportunities where these gifts and talents can be nurtured, can, can, can be given room to grow. So, um, for example, John would spend a lot of time in the Bible with the children. And they liked it. I mean, he would spend every day reading a chapter, not from Matthew and Mark and Luke, but from Haggai, Daniel, Zechariah, you know, things, even me, which I find difficult. And so I'm now talking about Sarah. And she got so much Bible, if I may call it that, that she was able to pick up um, CRE in S4 second term. And now she's a Bible trainer. She teaches in BSF. That is her cut, you know? And so when she decided that she was going to stay home, really it was nothing to do with us, if I may. I don't want to take any, any credit in this at all because she had a husband by then. She was expecting her first child and they sat down together and decided that we are going to take care of the children. When I asked her why, she said, but mommy, you spent a lot of time with us. I want to spend time with my children. Because I mean, I, for me, I, was not, I did not stop working, but the kind of work that I was doing gave me an opportunity to spend a lot of time with the children. I would, 
in, including John too. He would go to school. I would go to school when they were in Budo in Gayaza. We would attend everything. I mean, visiting, if there was a class day, we were totally interested in whatever they were doing until they left home. Now she had left home and she's with her husband and they're deciding to stay at home. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, and I've seen the fruits. At first I was like, oh my goodness, what is this going to come to uh, amount to? Won't they get into trouble? But remember, she's now a married person. So we are dealing with her as an adult in her home and they mm -hmm. made the choice. And over the 10 years that she has been staying at home, I have been amazed at that decision and what it has done in the lives of herself, her husband, but also in her children. They are my grandchildren, but they are so different from so many other kids because Sarah spent time with them. She knows them in and out. She knows what they need. She knows when they are not happy. She knows she's been to the schools. So um, I don't know whether I can take credit, but they watch. <laughs> That is amazing. We see indeed you are very supportive parents. And as you emphasize the aspect of being interested, even when they're married, I know their parents on call with married children still being um, interested is important. Of course, not forcing the child to take on your decision, but to support the decisions they make because now they're adults. Thank you so much for that submission. I believe that all of us are learning on how we can nurture and train these children by the grace of God. To you, Reverend Dr. John Senyonyi, we shall, after here, I think we shall pause and then you go to the next phase that you wanted to share with us. You mm. talked about the different great smarts. Uh, the little I have also studied and watched you, I think you're such a great lead, reader. You're such a great reader. And I've noticed that Sarah is a great reader as well. Passing that on to her children, it's amazing. <coughs> so you've talked about the different smarts, word smart, logic smart, picture smart, music smart, body smart, um, nature smart, people smart, self smart. And I know some of my friends on call up <laughs> trying to figure where they fall, how smart, anyway, are they any smart anyway? Some may be wondering, please help. How were you able to identify the smart levels for your children? How yeah. were you able to help them nurture, nurture that in their different areas of smartness so that one can as well learn from you? Uh, let me first of all emphasize something that Ruth said uh, about uh, husband and wife. Once your child is married, they are no longer under your jurisdiction. They can only consult you. And I think as parents, we need to be aware of that. Ours is to support and uh, ensure that the married child is in sync with the person that he or she married. Once they are agreed, yours is to support them. Uh, now, coming to these, I, let, let me emphasize that uh, um, it's not necessarily that each of us has only one. Uh, in fact, it is advisable that you have all the eight, <laughs> right? That we grow toward having all the eight. And uh, when, so when, when, we are, when we're raising the children, uh, quite often you would immediately, by observation and by talking to them, you would realize that a child is very interested in something. Uh, Sarah was very interested in poems. She expressed herself a lot poetically. And she would write these poems and would read them and would understand what she was going through, the emotions that were happening at that particular time. And uh, one of the ways to encourage a child like that is just to make sure that you read the poem that they have given you and you make a comment to acknowledge that you have actually read it. You know, it's not enough for you to read it and keep quiet, but engage, engage the child. Get to know exactly what the child has been doing. Then we had uh, our last born, Matthew. Uh, by the time he was in primary, I think something like four, he was reading 300 page books. And uh, that meant that uh, we had to make sure that we avail him, uh, avail him the books because the books that were being availed at school tended to be just 100 or even less. 
pages. And I can assure you that every week I was buying a book from Aristoc. And it was interesting because I would buy that book when we are come, when, when I picked him. And uh, we are coming to Mukono because for him that was like the, we were already in Mukono where most of his primary school. But the, by the time we would arrive in Mukono, he would have read the book. And he eventually was reading 400 page books. So we, because of the interest in reading, in fact, that started even earlier. Um, Ruth will tell you that coming from school, because she was the one most of the time bringing them, the moment he learned to recognize words, even on billboards, he was reading them. You know, and then you understand that this is a word smart kind of child. But he was not only word smart, he was also logic smart. And if you want really to, <laughs> to have an argument with Matthew, it will be a long one. <laughs> because he will not give up until he has reasoned you out. So it is that kind of thing. You observe, uh, you listen to what exactly they are interested in. They may even ask you for something. Um, but even Sarah, you know, reading, uh, reading was something, I remember there were some books that they were reading which we did not approve. And uh, they started, <laughs> they started bringing them, I can't remember now, I think probably Ruth remembers where they got those books probably in the neighborhood or something. And we told them, no, we don't want those books because the pictures in them and everything that they were showing, they looked more devilish than anything we wanted our children to have. Uh, but you know, uh, <laughs> Harry Potter, I think it is Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. Old, they kind of confess that they, they actually read them. <laughs> uh, yeah, when they now as adults, they have confessed that they actually read them, uh, but they understood that we disapproved and we did not. And of course, we had to try to make sure that we offer a different perspective. So I, I hope I've answered your question because I know time is running. So that's, that's really what was happening. Wow, thank you so much. Hope, friends, you have noted. I will not repeat that. Hope you have noted. But as a doctor, you plan to come back to briefly talk about the second submission you had. Allow me to pose this question to Dr. Ruth. Uh, yeah. One is wondering, how do you avoid comparing children? Because I, I noticed that my second bond seems to be more responsible than the first. How do I help the first one to up again without comparing the two? Well, let when you read this together, uh, how do you deal with career choice by a child of which as parent, you have no idea of the fu future exposure? Career mm. and then comparing. Well, by already saying I'm helping the first to up her game, <laughs> You're already comparing because to up her game to where? <laughs> to the other person. So it's something that we need to be aware of. And I think when you think of the Bible, I think it is Joseph and, and his brothers and what his father did. We use that a lot when we are talking about favoritism and comparison. This one is better. You have a, a multicolored coat and these guys are not so good. It causes a lot of friction between the kids. And you know, within the kids that you have, there are some that are very good at something and some that are very poor in something else. We, we wrote an article recently of um, being able to not only look at someone who's doing well in class, number one in class, but the other one might be the last, but might have other things that they do very, very well. So saying, all the time that your sister is a doctor, your sister was first, you are 36, you are, we are last. So being able to know that a child is capable of doing mm -hmm. things or mm -hmm. doing the other and upping their game, upping their game in what? Okay, <laughs> so we all, we want all these kids to perform well, but you have to know them. What are they good at? What are they not good at? If I give them help here, will they be number one or will they stay number seven or number 30? You need to know all that so that you can help them appropriately and stop saying, I think the thing that we should really say, stop saying that your sister is better than you. They even know how to make their bed. You don't know. So instead of that, we are teaching 
and helping them because it really works on them very, very, very much, especially if they are girls. Mm -hmm. Girls and comparison really, really work against them. Mm -hmm. So you need to be, to be careful. Mm -hmm. Then uh, dealing with career. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, John. Oh, dealing with the career, I, I think as parents, we must not be lazy about finding out what the children are going to do. If you don't know, it, the, your ignorance does not mean the information is not there. So find out what is it all about. Our, our last born now is doing something that we don't have the slightest idea. And I asked him twice. I cannot say that I fully understand what he's doing, but he's under data engineering. Uh, but he calls it analytics engineering. It's a specialized field of data engineering. And that's what he's doing. But, you know, I asked him, I have some hazy idea. But as parents, let's not be lazy. There are teachers to ask. There are lecturers to ask. There are uh, guidance counselors to ask. And so on and so forth find out rather than keeping quiet and then find out where will this lead the child rather than saying no I don't understand it therefore don't do it now that's not helpful because when a child is set on doing a particular field it's very difficult it's like trying to turn a trailer because it is in her thought or his thought turning a trailer now to a different direction and they may become a total disappointment both to themselves and to you i know someone who somehow was um, compelled in some ways to do sciences i mean he was doing sciences senior up to senior four but when to, but people knew his gifting is much better in the arts you know and so he ended up doing the sciences Lo and behold, unsuccessful. Couldn't even finish the degree because of that. So please understand the child. Work with the child. We're not saying you accept everything the child says. You also start guiding, but guide from an informed position rather than thinking that the child um, is doing the wrong thing. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Friends, hope you've noted that because of our time. I will not summarize. I will go to uh, Dr. Ruth and then come back to Dr. John. Uh, Dr. John wanted to talk about the development of talent. You can give that to us in, the, in your concluding remarks. Okay. And I think it will be That's great right. to as well have content that we can share with the rest. If it's written, we can as well share it with the rest. Uh, Dr. Ruth, we can come to you for your concluding remarks. Then later we can go to Dr. John. Um, okay, I think it's important for us to to seek the available opportunities to nurture whatever we have seen in our children. So if someone is singing, for example, what have you done for that child? Have you taken them for singing lessons? Um, and also give them that exposure to things around them. I can, I can think of what we exposed our children to. Sometimes we could not even afford those things, you know, mm -hmm. piano lessons, but there was somebody at the university who who could play the piano. So I talked to him and said, could you give Matthew, I think it was Matthew and, mm. but Sarah and Paul also got piano lessons. Can you please uh, spend some time with him just to, and they, they know how to play the basic piano, but they, it, it wore off. They didn't really pick it up. Mm -hmm. Guitar, all the boys in our family are very good guitarists. Benji did not even do any lessons with anyone. He went online and, and picked up the, 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 the guitar for himself. So what opportunities? I remember going for KKL, Kampala Kids League, when these kids were in P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, every Thursday and every Saturday, I put my stuff aside and went and just did what these kids wanted to do. They wanted to play football. They are very good football players. And they have actually, um, pulled me into football. I'm an Arsenal supporter. And I watch <laughs> Arsenal whenever they are around. <laughs> Why? Because we spent so much time on the football field. I was just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, Matthew. Go, Benji. Go, Paul. You know? So <laughs> what are the opportunities? So that sometimes these things actually end up in professions. Mm -hmm. Paul, for example, 
he loved Legos. And you know, they are big Legos and very tiny ones. And Paul would spend time just building things. See where he is now. He's an architect. He's the one who designed our house. You just from, you know, starting. And, and for us, of course, when you are giving him Legos, you do not even see that. So we can reflect back and say, wow, he used to love Lego building. He used to love art. See where he is now. And we exposed him to the things that will develop his gift and, and talent. I mean, I wish I could talk about each of my kids, but <laughs> available opportunities so that that gift is used. Sarah is a, is a prolific writer. And, you know, she, she ended up doing mass comp. So she writes, she speaks. Why? Because we exposed her to that. Wow. So mm. there's a Amazing. lot of. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's a very great lesson. Yes, please, Dr. Uh, Dr. John. Uh, yes. And uh, when he talks about comparing the children with one another, one of the other mistakes that parents often make is to comment. So they bring reports. Let us say two, three of them bring their reports. And you commend one and you have nothing positive to say about the other. Implicitly, the children are being compared with one another. So be aware of that. Commend each one of them differently. Stand with them. If the child is weaker in school, it's you to take responsibility to support them. So let me now just come to uh, finalize on uh, developing our talents and uh, gifts. And I think I'll try to be <laughs> much faster because I know time is gone. But um, uh, first and foremost, note that it's easier to develop those talents in the earlier ages. Psychologists and psychiatrists tell us that below the age of 12, that's when the brain is a lot more pliable and therefore you can form but you can go even up to age 25 and you are able to help the, because there is a lot of growth and they can take in a lot of information and they can really change in many ways secondly respect and allow for difference in talents and gifts we have already talked about this that you know these are going to be different by the way even if all children uh, music smart, you will still find their differences. Ruth has said that they all play the guitar, the boys. What does the girl do? An excellent singer. You hear her voice and you know this is a very good singer. So encourage all that. They are different. Even in playing the guitar, they are different. Benji even tried to start a band. Uh, then thirdly, recognize the potential to develop more than one gift or talent. You should be aiming at having all the great eight smarts. You know, all the eight great smarts. Uh, fourthly, accept each, each of them for who they are and that they can develop into areas, uh, other areas as well. Some of them, for example, develop later. I can tell you, for example, you said that I read a lot of books. Well, I have always read a lot of books, but the problem is I was doing sciences. I did PCM in high school, but I was not actually revising. And I learned to really revise and work harder on my mathematics, on my whatever I was doing at university. So some of us are late starters. And I think I would call myself a late starter in that respect. So I picked it up much, much later. So these are things that you need to be aware of. Deliberately expose each child to what they are good at. Once you identify it, expose them to that. Ruth has already talked about taking them to KKL. We even bought guitars. We exposed them to piano because we, and we exposed them to books and they read books as much as they could. So all these are very important. But having said all that, can I just say that don't put yourself in the position of God. Eventually, God determines. Some of them may get excited about something and then drop it. Okay? Because, you know, they, 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 it has waned. They are no longer so interested. So do not be surprised if that happens. Prepare yourself for disappointment. Some of them change exactly what they wanted 
to do. And our children, they have changed, you know, each one of them. Uh, some are going this way, others are going that way, and so on, but they are changing. They keep on changing, and they say, now I'm interested in this, now I'm interested in this. And so that's how things happen, and please be there for them so that they can change when they are interested in cooking, they are interested in sewing. Actually, our daughter does a lot of sewing. She makes our table mats, and she's making table mats for people. So you know, when you want table mats done, she's there. She's doing it. Now, that's something she picked up after she had actually stayed home. And she said, now I want to do sewing. And she does a great job. A table mat, you'll put a plate on. I love those. You put a glass on and you don't fear that the glass may power the water. So this is it. I mean, allow your children to grow and to develop whatever talent or whatever gift that they have. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. wonderful just say something about Benjamin because we've talked about the others and we have not talked so much about Benji mm -hmm. but Benji is our special child very loving you just saw it right from the time he was born and, and he's very computer I mean his computer skills are just way beyond anybody's and <laughs> he doesn't know how to teach so you say Benji I don't know how to do this. And he's like, he comes and does it and moves away, but he does not show you how to do it. So he's an, him again. <laughs> and, um, an amazing young man. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. We are still on friends. They're going to come back and pray and bless us. But just to emphasize to us, let's be interested in our children. Let's spend time with our children. Let's converse with them. Let's support them. Let's listen to their decisions and let's walk with them through those decisions as well. Let's expose them. There is so much that has been shared here. And I pray that we are putting in practice everything or we are taking on and we are going to be able to put in practice. But as well, when we expose them, when we allow them to go learn all those things let's also allow them to do them at home yes because practice makes permanent and uh, when they learned how to sing they did at home they everything so before we can even see them do the rest in church or out in the world it starts at home we've been told that one of their sons um, designed their house they started before you can even design for others it started at home so let's encourage that when our children learn to do the music, let them as well lead worship at home, and then we shall see them as well lead worship in the church. So let's encourage them, let's allow them to fail, do and fail even before us at home, and then let's also continue to make them better so they can as well be a blessing to the entire world and most of the body of Christ. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear friends. Uh, we are going to get into a time of prayer. Dr. Ruth will come and pray for us, and then Dr. John Senyon will give us a blessing. But allow me share the notices very, very fast so that then they can pray for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, show some love and appreciation in the chat. I think it's so great. We don't want to end, but time is, <laughs> is not on our side. We want to continue again and again. But please show some love. I know there are many questions we haven't responded to, but we are going to save them and see how we can respond to those other questions. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, these are the details. As you are led, feel free to give so that together we can take this media space. Try to fill the media space with the right content, like this kind of content. So when we give, we shall put an infrastructure in place. We shall continue to work on the different teachings, different videos, upload them so that the world can get such wonderful sessions. So please let us give and together let us dilute the wrong teaching in the media space with the right content that the Church of Uganda online and our different parishes is uploading in a media space. Praise the name of the Lord. Feel free to give. Those are the details. I will not go into the details of the weekly activities. As we always say, please take a screenshot so that you do not forget. Monday, we had this team. They did an amazing job. Yesterday, we had this team. Today, this amazing team, the senior news, oh, have done us great. Wow and wow. I know that we are going to be able to identify, develop, and use the different gifts in our different families to the glory of God. Tomorrow, we are having this team. These are IT and media people here <laughs> that are coming to engage with us, how we can be creative on uh, sharing God's word and using our gifts to take this media space for the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Yes, and on Friday, this team will be coming. Of course, we shall have our overnight to be on. Every morning, we start with morning prayers. Please don't miss out. We always start 5.30. By the grace I was leading this morning, tomorrow, Reverend David Munova will be leading. So please come, 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Always great. We have been challenged that it's important to pray, not to take God's place, to pray for our children and let God's will be. Friends, let's learn how to pray so that we can as well pray for our children and let God's will be in their lives. Today at Family Life Hour, this is the team that we are going to be engaging with on training the children to value work. Um, Mr. David Sebeke will be hosting the team and uh, Miss Luz Banda and Mr. Robert Suna, all um, educationists will be coming to engage with us and share with us the knowledge that God has given to them concerning training our children on how to value work. Please take a screenshot and make sure you are a part of our family hour this evening at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Catch you there and let's have a great time together. Just to let us know again that our t-shirts are available. Uh, of course, tonight, um, that is the, the family life hour is tomorrow, my dear friends. It's tomorrow, Thursday, not today. I think that was a mix. It's tomorrow, not today. This evening, we'll be having a movie night, a worship session. We'll engage in some, we'll worship together, watch a movie together, and then discuss that movie. So please come, let us dive deep in the word of God in this media space. Praise the name of the Lord. The t-shirts are on. Today, I rocked mine. I thought Dr. Ruth was going to rock her t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Dr. John Senyonyi, his will be arriving soon, to, I think tomorrow morning. So friends, we have all these colors. Uh, please make sure that you get yourself a t-shirt because many of our friends there at UCU, um, you know, taking their pieces. So please order so that you don't miss out on these beautiful, colorful t-shirts as we spread the word about the online Church of Uganda and as well going into the community to do God's work in these t-shirts. For us, we have the community activity tomorrow. We'll be meeting with the students here. And as well on Friday, we'll be going to work some ministries as the women. So if you want to join us, please get in touch with us so that you can join the team. But we shall be putting on our t-shirts as we do the community activities. Project Give Back. Praise the name of the Lord. These are the numbers of the people with the t-shirts. Feel free to take a screenshot so that you can get yourself a beautiful t-shirt so that you can look smart. We shall have Dr. Ruth come back. Pray for us, and then Dr. John Senyon will bless us. You are welcome. Thank you, Reverend Lydia, too, for leading us through this. Um, we continue to pray for you as you lead us, and, and uh, amazing, amazing work that you're doing. So we appreciate you, too. Thank you so much for, for this. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to... We want you to be able to say, good and faithful servant, that you have been faithful over little, I'll set you over much. You have given us responsibility over our husbands, our wives, and our children, so that we may be able to find that talent, to discover that talent, to recognize their uniqueness, to be able to support their strengths, their dreams, to be able to identify the eight great smarts and be able to nurture, cultivate and harvest. We thank you, Lord, that you have enabled some of us to see that process from when a child has been born till they're adults. We thank you and we pray that you give opportunity to many to be able to see that process play out. We pray Heavenly Father that we will do our part. We'll be able to provide opportunities for the people that we live with in our family that they may get to where they're supposed to get. Some of them work for us. Some of them have just come in as guests 
Some of them are our children. Some of them are our wives. We pray that we may not stifle them, that we may not discourage them, but instead uplift them and bring them to their full potential in every way. That at the end of the day, you may be proud of us and that we may be proud of the work that we have enabled the other people to do. Thank you for each person on this, uh, on, on this forum today. We pray that they may examine their hearts and be able to know exactly what you want them to do. We say that, Lord, we want to pray for wisdom. We want to pray for time, that we may know our children, that we may discover those things that they, are, they do so well, that, Lord, they may not go by unnoticed because we are not there. But, Father, give us that space. Give us that knowledge that we may know them and know them very well that we may nurture them, that they may become great in whatever they are doing, that their careers may be interesting because they are doing what they want, what they've been nurtured to. Thank you, Lord. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. You are muted. You are muted, darling. Loving Father, we thank you very much for the gifts and talents that you give us. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be with you, be with your families, be with your parenting, and your relationships in the family. May that blessing never leave you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. You're muted, Reverend Lydia. You're still muted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.